So today I'm going to be talking to you about the Lactarius mushroom. Now this mushroom is actually more commonly known as the milk cap or the milk mushroom. Now this isn't the type of milk that you want to be putting in your cereal. It's actually a white latex that looks a lot like milk. That's where it gets its name from. This mushroom actually lactates, which means it produces milk from its gills. So here we have a few lactarious mushrooms that are well hidden in the leaf litter. Scrolling by a large patch of leaf litter and the mushroom, you can see just how hard it is to tell the difference. This lactarious mushroom in particular has a very slimy top, which allows for these leaves to stick to the cap. It's really hard to peel these off in one piece. So before I pick up this mushroom, I just want to show you what it looks like while it's still in the ground. This is chicken biscuit. So now, for the cool part. Bub, no! <laughs> so I'm just gonna take this up, place it on my lap here, and let's watch the magic. So in the last clip, my duck actually tried to take a bite of this mushroom, and that has activated the milk or the latex from this lactarious mushroom to form. If you have a lactarious mushroom and it's not producing milk, just simply cut the gills and watch the milk flow. This mushroom produces the latex relatively fast, but that's not the case for every mushroom. Some species could take up to 30 minutes to produce the latex. As you watch the latex form, really pay attention to the color of the latex over time. It can start off white, but turn yellow, determining it a different species. So the lactarious mushroom is actually fairly easy to identify while you're in the field, based on its concave cap. Now, this is very similar in shape to the Rusla mushroom, but the number one way to tell the difference between these two is that this produces milk. This milk mushroom is so convex that it actually holds a pool of water. So here we have something really cool happening. This is an example of inscalation between two trees. Now, inscalation is when a tree fuses together with another tree over time. So here we have a beech tree, and here we have a sweet gum. Now, this tree, this beech tree, is probably the reason why this mushroom has formed. Though this specific milk mushroom has probably formed the ectomycal, even though this beech is most likely responsible for the formation of this mushroom, beech trees are not the only tree known to form ectomycorrhizal relationships. There are a number of trees that can form this type of relationship, but the most common are pine, birch, and oak. Next time you find a milk mushroom, the first thing you should do is look around and see what trees are surrounding you. This can help you in identifying the type of mushroom you're looking at. Once you have 100% identified your surrounding trees, you can now flip the mushroom over and cut the underside of its gills and watch the milk flow. Bubs, what are you doing? <laughs> this mushroom technically shouldn't be in this video because it is a member of the Lactifluus family, but it was formerly known as Lactarius volumus, or the fishy milk cap. This mushroom grows from summer to fall, and it is valued as an edible mushroom. The gills on the underside of the cap are closely spaced and sometimes forked. The most distinctive feature is the large amount of latex that this mushroom produces when the gills are damaged. This is why this mushroom is called voluminous latex milky. This mushroom's stem or stipe is bare. The spore print is white, and the latex of this particular mushroom is known to stain brown. And if this doesn't happen, you know you don't have the voluminous milky. Another key identifying feature this mushroom has is the fishy smell. Some people describe it as sweet and almost cheese-like. 
Luckily, when cooked, this fishy scent does go away. The latex, when cooked, has a mild taste, and this species is considered good for beginner mushroom hunters and is best prepared by slow cooking to prevent it from becoming too hard. This orangish yellow glob is actually a mold that is known to parasitize one species of the lactarius mushroom and one species of the rusla mushroom. Once the mold finds its host, it begins to grow into this weird orange glob that you see. And this orange glob is known as the lobster mushroom. Now, a mushroom that is known as a mold fungi doesn't sound too appetizing, but in this case, it's quite the contrary. This mushroom is actually found throughout many different kitchens around the world, including mine. I'm in the upstate of South Carolina, and I typically find the lobster mushroom around early summer, along with other lactaria species. Due to the strange look of this mushroom, it's fairly easy to identify, but please make sure that you have this mushroom before you eat it. Always be sure. Next, I have a clip of my process of cleaning and cooking the lobster mushroom. Hope you enjoy. Ready. 